today's episode of the Coaching Coordinator Podcast, we talk about the process that it takes to get to the head coaching position after years of working as an assistant. We're going to talk about developing a process for mission, vision, and principles, and we're going to get a little into the Gun Triple 2.0, which Coach Ralph Isernia has developed at RPI, and we're happy to have him here as our guest on the podcast. So, Coach, thank you for taking the time today. Uh, thanks, thanks, Keith. It's uh, it's always great to be on, and uh, um, really I enjoy your work and uh, and listen to it. Your uh, great testament for uh, for for our our football uh, co- coaching brethren. That's for sure. Well, I appreciate that, Coach. And as I told you before we got going, I've been trying to get you on for for years, and it just <laughs> seems we've never been able to connect. So I'm I'm excited to be able to have you here today, and uh, we'll just get started today with you know your beginning of this. You know, how did you get your start in coaching and I, probably even more so. Why did you want to become a coach? <laughs> that's a that, that's a really good question. And um, you know, I I uh, I uh, went to school at uh, Davidson College, played uh, football and baseball there. And uh, when I graduated, uh, you know, thought I was going to go uh, in the law school, and um, you know, saw the price tag for law school, and and uh, said, you know what, I'm going to put that off for a couple of years and go get my master's degree and, and uh, wasn't quite ready to grow up yet. And, um, went on to uh, Western Connecticut and got my, uh, my, uh, my GA there and, um, you know, never, you know, got, got the coaching bug. And I, I think when you, you have, um, you know, you have experiences around the game and, and, you know, your, your greatest friends are, are through the game, you know, whether it's football and baseball, it's, uh, it's tough to to leave that stuff behind and uh, and like I said, grow up and, and get out get a real job. Um, so, you know, just um, moved around uh, for a couple of a uh, couple of schools uh, there and uh, landed uh, here at, uh, at at RPI. So I was a, an assistant coach for about 23 years. Obviously, I had uh, you know some opportunities to uh, to move to different schools and and did that. Uh, and uh, was very fortunate. Uh, RPI was gave me an opportunity to be a head coach, and uh, been here for the last uh, eight years, uh, seven seasons, but eight years uh, with this this whole COVID thing. So, um, you know, real excited uh, that they gave me an opportunity, and we've got a fabulous administration and uh, and coaches and facilities and and uh, a great academic school as well. So, um, kind of got the whole package here, and, and you know, very lucky to. Uh, be the head coach. Well, getting to that head coaching position is always a process, and I know as young coaches, it's it's always that that itch to get there, and, and um, you want to get there as fast as possible. But uh, the process along the way is important. And so, for you in those those twenty three years as an assistant, or you know, for any of us, the time we spend as an assistant is really a chance to learn. Uh, without necessarily being in the spotlight and have those W's and L's go uh, behind our name. Uh, but there's a lot you can le- learn for you, especially early on. What were those important lessons that really helped in your development as a coach? Yeah, you know, as as a, as a young coach, you know, I think it's important for you to, to try to soak everything in. And if you have a vision for yourself uh, to be a head coach, um, you know, you, you do something like, like I did, I had the, I had the, you know, when I become a head coach file and it was all of the, you know, and back in the day, you know, when we started, this was, uh, you know, it, they were, it was actually papers, right? So, you know, I actually had a file of, uh, of, of this stuff and, and, you know, it, you had different sayings and different mantras and, and success that other coaches had had in the past and say, Oh, you know, I'd like to do it that way. Or, Hey, look, that works. That looks interesting right there. And, and you wind up accumulating all of this information and it's almost uh, like sensory overload. Like, okay, but now where do I start with all this stuff? Uh, and it's, um, you know, it's almost, almost like drinking from a fire hydrant. It's like so much, I, you know, really can't, you know, get it all. Um, so it, it's important for you to figure out what's the most important uh, what's the most important thing for you, you know, as you're going through that, that whole process. And, you know, for, for me, especially, especially here was, um, you know, developing, you know, our mission statement and what we're all about. And that was, you know, that was, that was key because everything in our program drives from our mission statement. And um, just like every great organization, you have to have that focus. You have to have um, that, uh, that mantra that uh, you're going to live by, 
and um, you know we're we're fortunate. We have uh, we have a great uh, group of coaches. We've got outstanding um, student athletes in our program, and you know we're a leadership development program that builds champions on and off the field. And everything we do in our program is framed right from that mission statement. So, um, you know, you need to be a champion in your mind first before you're ever a champion on the field. And, um, you know, a lot of our guys, they have that work ethic. They've got that type A personality. And, you know, they're going to do what it takes to get in the weight room, to get on the football field and and do the extra work that it's going to take, uh, you know, to be a champion. And only you can define um, if if you're a champion, if you're playing to that championship level and, and only champions win championships. So I know you're seeing that, that, uh, evolve right now. We've, we've certainly had a lot of challenges. It's been over a year since you've been on out on the field with your guys. Um, but a true testament to what your program is about. I know you're excited about this upcoming season, which, you know, looks to be fall of, of 2021 for you. Um, with this senior group that, um, you know, you have 26 guys, uh, they get the chance, the, they get their fifth year, and uh, I think, again, uh, just the time they have to put in, but also at your school, what this cost them truly is a, a testament to them believing in what you guys are doing. Talk to us a little bit about uh, what the, the 2021 season brings for you, especially in terms of the leadership that you have. Oh, absolutely. You know, what we're, what we're excited about is, uh, you know, when, when I take a step back and and say, okay, you know, where'd we start and and where are we right now with our leadership development and our culture and, and what we're all about as a, as a football program. um, I was the, I was the sixth head coach in basically two and a half seasons here at RPI. So, you know, you had a coach, you had an interim coach, you know, this, that, and the other. And, for whatever reason, you know, there was a lot of upheaval, you know, with the program and, and my, uh, you know, my goal was to bring stability to, to the program. And uh, I believe that's, that's something that we've done, but in the process, what we've done is we've created a culture where these guys, they just like I did when I was playing and, and a lot of the other coaches that really enjoy being around each other, really enjoy, you know, playing, playing for the sake of, of each other. And, um, you know, we've got 26 seniors, and I believe four of them are going to graduate uh, here in May. Uh, so that means we've got 22 that are coming back either um, for a, a fifth year or for their graduate um, degree, which we're very fortunate here at, at RPI to have an outstanding graduate school. Um, so I think that speaks volumes to, you know, to the, the character of our guys wanting to finish their careers on the field and play with each other and, and, and run it back, you know, for another year. Um, and, you know, oh, by the way, they're, they're getting a phenomenal education and it does not come, it does not come cheaply. You know, we're about around 78,000. So, you know, to make that commitment to come back for an extra year, I really think that it, it really speaks volumes about the people that we have in our program. And, uh, you know, we're excited about those guys uh, coming in and our junior class, we've got about 36 in our junior class. That'll be, you know, be fourth year seniors. And, you know, so, you know, 58 seniors, uh, it make, makes for a long senior day, but, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're tickled about that. That's for sure. Cause taking a step back to some of the things we were talking about earlier and, and looking at, your time, your evolution as a coach to be able to get to this position um, after serving, you know, as an assistant coach for 23 years. Um, what things helped you along the way, helped you evolve, especially when you look at, you know, the opportunities you get, the interview process, and, uh, you know, and, and a lot today, you know, we hear about, you know, building your brand and all those kinds of things. But I know you look at something deeper that goes beyond brand. Brand is, is what everybody sees, but um, I think you see it as, as something deep or something more than that. I, and, uh, you know, absolutely. And I think, you know, as a young coach and, and going through the profession and, and you're recruiting and you're watching film on, on some of these guys and saying, Hey, we need to get that kid there. And, you know, he can throw the ball 70 yards and that guy runs a four, four forty, and we need to get him. And that guy's, you know, 300 pounds and, you know, he can be a great offensive lineman for us, you know, I think as a young coach, you're, you're so consumed uh, by the biology, right? You're a big believer in biology. And, and, you know, when, 
you know, I think the the maturation process is is turning that belief into to more chemistry. Um, so, you know, we're we're a huge belie- believer in in the chemistry uh, of a team, and I think that's you know one of the things that um, you know get asked about. Uh, you know, hey, how did how were you able to turn around? How were you able to to build that program? How do you have those guys that you know that um, you know are are playing hard for you every single down? You know, one of the greatest compliments I think that I've ever heard is from a, a rival coach. You know, in in pregame, you know, you have that pregame talk at the 50 yard line and. You know, usually not a whole lot is being said. You know, it's a lot of small talk and all that stuff. And he said, Coach, you know, I really enjoy watching your team on film, really enjoy watching them play. They play hard for each other. And, you know, um, you know, I wish I could have said the same thing about his team. Uh, but, um, you know, really appreciate the compliment. I think that that speaks volumes about the, the guys that we have on our team. And, you know, you know, building building your brand and what you stand for and what you're all about, it's it's. I think as a coach, you need to figure out that, uh, you know, unfortunately you do get judged by the, by the wins, the winning percentage, the wins and losses, but you can't focus on the win. You got to focus on the process of how to get to the win. And, uh, you know, some of the things that some of the coaches ask me is, is, uh, you know, Hey, what's that brand? What is that process that, um, that you have gone through? Uh, just like you're asking here, it's, it's, you know, what do you believe in? What do you stand for? And, and what are you all about? And I think those are things that if you are a program of character, if you're a program of substance, it's not just the wins and losses, because if we're just judged by wins and losses, you know, the greatest, greatest coach uh, of, of the modern era uh, in Division One football, Nick Saban, you know, he won the national championship seven times in, in close to about 40 years. And that's a less than 15 uh, percent win percentage, which is probably one of the, one of the best in in in, uh, in the history of football. But there's only one team that wins a national championship in in every level, and if you're going to gauge uh, your success uh, by winning a national championship, you're going to be disappointed a whole lot. Um, so you need to to figure out what kind of program that you want to be, uh, and what. Um, you know, what your goal setting process is in order to, to become successful, in order to, to be that, that program of substance and, um, you know, having guys play hard for you and, and playing hard for each other and seeing that on the field, um, most of the time that will result in, in wins uh, for you. So that's part of the process. That's the thing that, that we look at the most here. And I know, as you told me before we got going, your process you call it the MVP process, which, as you explained it to me, I think is it's very simple. Uh, it's clear and concise to think about, but certainly a lot goes into it. Could you explain for our listeners the MVP process? Uh, absolutely. That's so. the The MVP process is um, it, it frames um, it, it frames our our, our culture, frames uh, our mission statement. So it's your it's your mission, it's your vision, it's your principles. And your mission, that's, that's who, who we are, and uh, that's our mission statement. And then the vision is, is how we get there. Uh, how do we get to uh, a champion, uh, championship uh, program? How do we build champions on and off the field? Uh, how do we develop leaders uh, so that not only are they leaders on our football team, but they're going to be leaders out in the workforce when they graduate? Uh, so how do we get there? Um, and then your principles, you know, what are you about? What are the pillars of your program? What are your non-negotiables that you have to have? What do you guys need to see from your team? You know, we are, um, you know, we are um, built on excellence, uh, excellence uh, through the grind and um, a character compete together and trust. Those are our, our principles that we uh, that we not only talk about, but we live it every day. And that's part of our culture. And um, what we say is that if you're not talking culture every day, then you don't have one. And it's, it's important for us, especially in these times where we don't have a chance to see our team and to give them a post-practice speech or give them uh, a talk uh, during our, our position meetings that you're seeing them in person. It's important for us to do that uh, through the Zoom meetings and, and through text messages and, and, uh, and emails and, and whatever um, platform we can use in order to, to keep talking that culture because that's important because once you stop doing that, then, then that makes it seem like it's not important anymore. 
Coach, in, in uh, I guess getting into some of the stuff you do on the field, you mentioned you spent some time at Charleston, uh, which of course was with Tony DeMeo, a good friend of the podcast, has been on here a number of times. I uh, always love talking ball with Coach DeMeo. Um, and the gun triple is really, you know, the offense he talks about all the time. I see him posting about it all the time on, on our, <laughs> our coaching coordinator Facebook page. Uh, but you guys have evolved it to the gun triple 2.0. Uh, how would you describe your offense? Yeah, um, you know, I came, um, matter of fact, uh, the year before uh, I went to Charleston, I was at uh, Bucknell, and we were running uh, flex bone. So we were under center triple. And it was what was neat for me is that I came from, you know, maybe a more spread pro style background and uh, learned um, from, from Tin Camp, from, uh, from Brent Thompson, um, at, um, he's at Citadel right now and learned from those guys, uh, you know, the, the triple from under center. And, and that was a good springboard to work with Tony, um, and, you know, developed the, uh, the gun triple. And, and, um, what's good about, uh, coach DeMeo is, you know, he's very open to, um, you know, to different ideas and, and different things that, uh, you know, he, he allowed me to experiment a little bit with, uh, with his, uh, with his toy, uh, and, and, you know, what he had developed. And, uh, you know, I think at, at Charleston, we took it to another level. And um, from there, I, you know, I left and went to, went to Ferrum College, and, and we basically ran a lot of the same things. We were a little bit more multiple formation-wise, and maybe perimeter blocking was a little bit different. Uh, and, you know, we had different tags and stuff like that. But, um, you know, we had success there. And then coming here to, to RPI, you know, we were uh, – for the first couple of years, we were running a lot of gun triple and uh, had a lot of the same, um, same plays, same principles uh, that, you know, I had been using at, at the previous stops. Um, and it just, uh, at one point, it, it just didn't fit completely with what we're doing. And, and um, you know, we basically changed, uh, I wouldn't say, you know, midstream, but uh, in uh, 2015, uh, we switched over a little bit more to the an RPO system, which is still option football. Um, so we had, you know, uh, first level, second level, even third level reads for our quarterback. And it was easy for us to, to switch to that system because the quarterbacks were already uh, drilled on the option system of who my reads are, who am I reading for, for give and who am I reading for pull and, and what's the pitch? Is the pitch a, an actual uh, you know, thumb under pitch here, or is it going to be a throw? And where am I throwing? Where's my spot that I'm thrown to? So, it, that was uh, that that was neat to to kind of when when you go back and see kind of the evolution uh, that a kid can can make that a quarterback can make and say, hey, hey, and, and here's the one that came to me and said, coach, hey, this is just like triple option. And it's like, yeah, it is because you know you do have a run component to it, but we had a quarterback in in 2015 that that was a lot better thrower than he was runner, a really good athlete, but uh, you know we didn't want to run him as much as uh, what's required in the uh, in the gun triple. So, um, what's uh, you know interesting story is we're getting to our bowl game that year. We were running RPO, uh, you know, for the for the first half of the game. And, um, you know, we were, we were moving the ball up and down the field, but uh, just weren't getting points out of it. And, you know, we wanted something more explosive, more explosive plays. And we started calling more gun triple um, in, the, uh, in the second half and uh, scored a game-winning touchdown on, a, a, on an option pitch. And um, so it was, it was neat that we kind of transitioned from one to the other, and it was pretty seamless. And our, our guys, uh, you know, our, our guys didn't miss a beat. When you look at the aspects of, you know, again, the gun triple 2.0, we'll call it, um, in, in what you're doing with RPO, has that, I guess, made the, the recruiting process and expanded maybe the parameters for what you're looking for in a quarterback that it's, you know, when, you're, when you are the triple, you know, true triple team and running the thumb under pitch, um, there's certainly a distinct type of quarterback that you look for and a guy who hopefully has some of that experience doing it too. Um, not always the easiest to find, especially when you add a, a layer on top of that of, of what's required to get into your school. Uh, so how, how has that helped you, I guess, being able to find some continuity from year to year by maybe having to plug in different types of guys? Yeah, and I think when you look at, you know, what are the parameters that you're, you're recruiting? You know, we got a, a 1,400 SAT guy, and 
and uh, he he wants to study uh, engineering or he wants to study business or computer science and um, and we want him to be a, a really dynamic athlete. Uh, he has a lot of options out there, you know, and and uh, at, at the Division One level. So you know, we're recruiting against. Uh, the Ivies for for those guys recruiting against the Patriot Leagues and and also against the NESCAC schools and then um, the other schools uh, here in Division Three that are high academic schools as well. So you know what can can we get that uh, that dynamic playmaker at that position and and uh, you know we'll always look for a really good athlete, a guy that can a guy that can run and throw at that position. It's just hey what you know what are we going to get you know if we can get a guy that's probably a better thrower than a runner, then, you know, then we're going to take that. Um, so, you know, I think what's important with, uh, you know, with our system and with other coaches is that you're flexible enough that if you can't recruit that, or, if, you know, even at the high school level, if, uh, if that kid's, uh, you know, if you're a great quarterback, his, if his younger brother isn't a, isn't a great quarterback and he's not a dynamic playmaker, you got to try to try to find someone or you just need to adjust your system. I think that's one of the things that we did here is, is adjust the system to the type of players that we have. And, um, you know, we can, we can still run some wildcat and, and, you know, put some, some runners at that quarterback position that might not be uh, great throwers. But um, I think one of the things that when you look at, you know, the way that we've evolved the last number of years is that we have, uh, former quarterbacks playing wide receiver and playing defensive back and playing slot um, that, uh, you know, they still know how to throw a football. So there still is a, a, a passing threat, a passing option, you know, when we put them in at, uh, you know, at that, you know, quote unquote wildcat position. So um, it's good to have options. It's good to have different guys that can get the ball um, and, uh, and put them out in space. And uh, but I think, you know, you need to have whatever the core offense that you have, a core defense that you have, that you're you're sticking to that. And that's, you know, that's that that's really your identity. When when you look at, you know, the original version of this that you've you've built from uh, and again, we've we've had Coach DeMeo on here talking a, a few times about different aspects of the offense and different principles. But for you, what are some of those principles that are still foundational in, in how you do things? Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, a lot of things, it's, it's uh, attacking a defense um, on a multiple front. Um, you know, there's, there's inside components, there's outside components, you know, there's counters, um, there's counters that, you know, maybe you're not, uh, you're, you're not running GT counter, but it's, uh, you know, a counter off of an action. It's uh, multiple formations. Uh, trying to outmaneuver defense or trying to, you know, gain leverage or gain a numbers advantage. I think those are some things that, uh, you know, when you look at, you know, what we were doing at uh, at University of Charleston with, with Tony, uh, just made it difficult to defend and really force teams to play a little bit more of a vanilla defense because if they overcommitted to one thing or they coached it up, you know, one way, then there was always a counter uh, that we looked for in order to exploit that defense in order to play. Hey, you know, the, we knew that we were going to have success if a team was just playing stagnant, if they were just sitting in a four, three, two high safety look, or they were sitting in a four, four, one high safety look. And that's what they played from, from one snap um, from snap one to snap 75. And, and, you know, we knew where they're going to be and and knew what to look for uh, in order to try to try to outmaneuver and and um, you know I, I think you know we were fortunate we you know, we had some really good players there as well but uh, it um, it was I think a testament to the system that we were running that there were a lot of <laughs> a lot of options in that option system. Coach, in looking at all the things you do. Um, you know, on and off the field. We've mentioned some great things here today already. Uh, you guys are having a lot of success. Six straight uh, playoff appearances in, in Division Three, NCAA Division Three. Six straight winning seasons there at RPI. Um, what would be the one thing you point to, though, that really gives your team the winning edge? Uh, I think it's, it, it's um, it, in one word, it would be stability. Um, it's stability... Uh, you know, not only of our of our coaching staff, and we've got some phenomenal co uh, coordinators here. Um, 
it's stability of our coaching staff and also stability of, of our program and stability of the message, the message that we, we keep preaching to our team. It, it has not changed in what we're about and what we stand for. Um, our guys know it. Um, you know, we preach it every single day. And, um, you know, I think that's the thing that, um, that, that really, um, you know, excites me ab- about our program, excites me about our coaching staff every single day. And these guys, you know, they, they work, they work their, their tails off for our players. Um, and you can see that there's, you know, there's a lot of love uh, with our, our players and our coaches, uh, you know, back and forth. We, you know, we love being around them. We love interacting with them, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, we can't wait to get back on the field. Coach, I know you guys uh, recruit nationally with a, a very high academic profile, as you've mentioned, and, um, you know, very specialization, too, in your school, obviously, with engineering being mm-hmm. the focus. Uh, the kind of guys you're looking for uh, and uh, the best way for coaches out there maybe who have a guy to get in touch with you. Yeah, uh, best thing for, for them to do is to uh, to reach out to, to our coaching staff Um you know, I, I would say that, uh, you know, get online to our football website, uh, hit us up on Twitter. We have um, links on all of our Twitter pages to, to get to our online recruiting form here and, uh, you know, get uh, film and transcripts, film and transcripts uh, on these guys. And um, if you think that, that it's a, a really good player and might be uh, maybe a little bit borderline academically with with the numbers that that you're looking at on the admissions place. Hey, you know, give us a you know, send us the, the transcript with the film, and you know, we can uh, you know we can get a, a better understanding of, of where they're at. But um, yeah, like you said, we do recruit nationally. We've got uh, I believe 24. We'll have 24, 25 different states represented on our roster, uh, and some of the best and brightest from all across the country. Coach, I appreciate you taking time here uh, with us, and I know you guys are itching to get back out on the field, so best of luck here as you guys prepare for it, the 2021 season. Uh, thanks a lot, Coach. I really appreciate being on. Thank you again for listening to the Coaching Coordinator Podcast. Please, if you are enjoying the podcast, head over to iTunes or Spotify and click five-star for it. Right? If you have a minute, write a review. It really helps the podcast. Check out our new home for the coaching coordinator podcast that's at coachandcoordinator.com and follow me on twitter at coach k grabowski